Hi everyone, welcome back to High Country Homesteading. I'm Carly and I just got home from picking up my first ever side of beef order. And so today I'm going to go through that process with you on how I ordered this for the first time. I've never bought uh, beef or any kind of meat in bulk before. So I'll take you through that process. I'm going to show you all the cuts of meat that I got and I'll let you know how many pounds that I received and what were price that I received it for. So first I'll start a little bit of background. So like I said, I've never bought beef in bulk before, nor any other kind of animal. So this is my first time and I've just been trying to prioritize a better quality meat over this past year. Um, so we've really been trying to get more grass fed. We have been eating butcher box for probably the past six months. And then I knew this, the most sustainable way of doing this was doing a large order at one time. So now that it's winter and it's a good time to buy in bulk and stock up so that you don't have to go out in the snow, I thought it was the perfect time to do so. So I was very lucky and the timing worked out perfect. So over the spring and summer, since we do live in a new area, this was our first spring and summer here. So we started going to the local farmer's market. And at this farmer's market is where I met the particular rancher that I purchased from. So I started talking to him uh, a couple of times that I was going there. I was able to sample his beef and he actually specializes in Highland cows, which I had not thought of as um, the product that I would be receiving. I was thinking all other types, but I didn't know that Highland cow was a certain beef specialty. So that was very interesting and gave me some info on Highland cows. I also looked him up on my localharvest.com and saw that he was included on there as well. But I know a big part of buying local and especially buying in bulk like this is making sure you know where your beef comes from. So I asked him a lot of questions. I asked how the cows were fed and how many that he had, um, what the space looked like that he kept them in. He has a beautiful farm that has just acres and acres for these cows to graze in. Um, they're completely grass fed. Um, I believe in the winter time, if needed at the very end, they would get a little bit of green, but um, that's typical of most cows. Um, cause, cause it does get very cold here. So they're mostly grass fed, which was important to me. And I liked the rancher and I liked how the cows were being treated. So I felt very good about this particular rancher. I also looked up the butcher that he uses and I learned that they were a very long time family in the area. They've been doing this over a hundred years in the same spot and they are a very reputable butcher. So he had the butcher connection. Sometimes I know that you can purchase the cow from the rancher, but you need to find your own butcher. I was lucky and this is what I wanted was for the rancher to have the relationship with the butcher and they already have um, a repertoire going there. So very happy about that. And so basically once I decided that I wanted to purchase the side of beef from him, he gave me a cut sheet and that's very typical. It's a little bit difficult to learn exactly how to fill out a cut sheet. So it took a little bit of research, but I'm going to link in the description a couple of really good videos by a YouTube channel called The Bearded Butchers. And they are amazing butchers who show you a breakdown of everything and how to fill out a cut sheet. And they'll show you all the different kinds of cuts of meat that you can get. And I really studied those videos for a while to determine everything that I was going to want. Um, a couple of other things to keep in mind is there are the regular cuts, but some things you might have to ask for. And some things a cow only has one of, and if you're getting a side of beef, that means you're just getting half. So that means somebody else is getting the other half of your cow. So some of the things that you could be interested in are different types of organ meats like um, kidneys, heart, um, let's see what else you could be interested in tail for oxtail. Um, so different types of cuts like that. And also what wasn't included on my cut sheet was if I wanted to make tallow. So it didn't include anything about getting fat. 
so I had to make sure I included that on there. I asked them for as many bones as I could possibly have because I want to make as much bone broth as I can from this cow and I want to use everything I can. Um, I would like to use the different organ meats because they're so healthy for you and anything that I don't personally use I would like to give to my dogs as treats so there's so many ways that you can use every part of the animal and be a good steward of the animal. So that was very important to me and I did a lot of research on those cuts. And so what happened next was that he took my order. I actually didn't pay until today. He took my order and then the cow was sent to the butcher. The butcher made a hanging weight. So my hanging weight, which means the animal before it was butchered, ended up being 265 pounds. And the purchase price from the rancher is $6 per pound. So I paid for the hanging weight at $265 for $6 a pound. So when the butcher receives the meat, they're going to do a hanging weight, which is basically just the beef hanging up and doing the initial weigh-in. So that's with all of its water weight, all of its bones, and it's not been cut up into your cuts yet. So after they take the hanging weight, then the meat is dry aged and that's just so it gets, it develops the flavor and gets more tender. My beef was dry aged for about two weeks and so that loses a little bit of weight because of water evaporation and things like that. So after the beef is dry aged, then that's when it's processed into your different cuts. So the 265 was the starting weight, but it's going to lose a little weight after that and like I said we're gonna weigh it today and see just how much we got for the six dollars a pound. Now some cuts of beef aren't typically six dollars a pound say like your ground beef which you do get a lot of when you order a side of beef but what evens it out is that you're also getting the really nice cuts for six dollars a pound which you never could in the grocery store so you're getting t-bone steaks you're getting briskets, you're getting filet mignons, all for $6 a pound as well. And it really comes out to a really nice savings doing it this way. So, and it also depends on, you know, the quality that you're trying to get as well. And like I said, I've been really trying to prioritize high quality meat in my diet rather than getting the cheapest on the grocery shelf. So, this was the most sustainable way for me to do that. And I'm very excited to see how everything turned out. So I'm going to open these boxes and lay everything out. We are in my basement because that's where my deep freezer is and that's where all this is going. So I'll show you everything I got and how much of each and then we'll go over it all at the end. I just laid everything out here and then I have more behind me right here. So we're going to go over everything and how much we got of each. All right, going left to right. I have one flank steak, one flap. We have a package of neck bones. This is just one package of oxtails. I have one, two, three, four, five, six packages of short ribs, which I'm very excited to cook with. I never have before, but they're incredible. This is one hanger steak. We have quite a few packages of soup bones and they're varying sizes. So this is a pretty large one. That's a small one. So they will probably all go together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 packages of soup bones. Here we have two skirt steaks. We have one flat iron steak. Actually, two flat iron steaks. These are kidneys. And if we go up here, this is kidney fat. So kidney fat, I believe, is supposed to be the cleanest fat on the beef. And this is what we're going to make tallow from. So... Hopefully sometime in the near future, I'll have a video out showing rendering tallow for the first time and putting it in some shelf-stable jars. So very excited for that. 
We also got one tongue, a couple packages of liver, and also a heart. So moving over here, these are our roasts. Now I asked for 12 of the boneless chuck roast and I only got five. So I don't know if I did something wrong on my cut sheet or I misunderstood something. I went over it with the rancher and he said it all looked fine. So I'm gonna have to ask about that. So we'll see what happened there. But moving over here, I have this glorious looking brisket. So this is probably gonna need to go in a smoker. We're gonna have to do it justice somehow because it's huge and it's beautiful. We have all of our beef bone in ribeyes. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packages of ribeyes. And we asked to have two to a package and we had them cut an inch thick. So that's what we specified. And we chose to have everything bone in. Um, we also have some stew beef. So these are six packages of stew beef. We have two filet mignons. And we also have five packages of stir fry beef. I asked them, this wasn't on the cut sheet, but I asked if it was doable to have something specifically stir fry, just kind of cut into strips um, so that we can make fajitas and obviously stir fry and things like that and then we also have t-bone steaks so we have eight package of t-bones and same as the others we did two to a package and these are cut about an inch thick and then lastly down here is all of our ground beef so in these two boxes there's 95 pounds of ground beef um, may seem like a lot of ground beef to some people, but I really like using ground beef. We like making our own burger patties. You could have, with the butcher, ask them to put some of the ground beef into burger patties, but that was an extra charge. And we like, you know, putting our own seasonings and stuff in them, so we don't mind making the patties ourselves. I also use this a lot for tacos, and I make a lot of bolognese sauce, so this will get used and I'm very excited to use it. So this is all of our meat that we got. And I'm gonna add it all up. All right, so I totaled everything up and everything I have here is about 188 pounds. And that's all the meat that I'm gonna be cooking, not counting the fat and some of the organ meats. So 188 pounds. I also do think that I'm missing a couple of chuck roasts that I need to look into. Um, but other than that, 188 pounds, $6 a pound. And I feel like that's a really good price for the quality of beef that I have. And I'm so excited to cook with this and taste it. And I hope I do it all justice. That's the part that I really want to make sure that I do. I don't want to overcook beef like I know I can do time and time again. So we're going to work really hard on learning how to cook this correctly so that it can be as tasty as possible and so that we are good stewards of this beef and that we do a really good job with it. I really want to. So thank you for coming along with me and make sure that you check out those Bearded Butcher videos because they can do a much better job explaining the details of what actually happens at the butcher shop than I can and that's where I learned a lot of stuff from. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.